The Anaim begins with Tamaka walking towards the shopping district with her friends Kana and Midori. She is so happy that the holidays are approaching that she almost walks past her street. She says goodbye to her friends and visits the food and flower shops. Inside the flower shop, the florist tells her that new flowers arrived last night from a distant island. But inside one of the flower arrangements, there was a strange bird. And it's not just any bird, it's one that can talk, which surprises Tamako. So she sneezes and throws it away, but the bird quickly flies to land on her head. The bird doesn't want to let go of her. So Tamako stops at the bookstore to buy a book about birds. When she arrives home, she finds her childhood friend Mochizo watching their father's fight. Tamako's father, Mr. Mamade, criticizes Mochizo's father for putting English words on his new sign for his mochi shop. But Tamako comments that it looks great and tries to get between them, but they accidentally knock the bird over. Then, she, Mochizo, and Mr. Mamade take the bird inside. At that moment, Anko, Tamako's little sister, arrives and asks her grandfather how long they have had a mochi shop, and he says it's been a long time. Suddenly, the bird wakes up and says that he has come from distant lands looking for a bride for his prince, but he lost his way and ended up in the market, and since Tamako sneezed on him, he will stay with her for a while because that means courtship in bird language. Mochizo and Mr. Mambe can't believe that the bird can talk, and not only that, the bird pompously introduces itself as Della Muck it is gusting, and since it seems to say that mochis are disgusting, Mr. Mambe punches the bird. At night, Tamako and Anko go to the bathhouse and run into Mochizo. He is happy to see Tamako, and she reminds him that it is her birthday soon and expects a gift from him, which makes him blush. At that moment, Della arrives and asks Mochizo about the bathhouse, and he explains what it is and how they work, and Della loves it because it is a very warm place. The problem is that he flies towards the girl's section, and Tamako forcefully throws it away. The next day, Della wakes up at Mochizo's house, and when he opens the window, Della flies to Tamako's house, where she is already awake and helping to make mochis for the family business. After that, she goes to school with enthusiasm because today she has bait and club. At bat and practice, her friends ask her what she wants as a gift, since her birthday is coming up and she says she would like a new sign for her mochi shop, although that is a bit difficult. Later, Tamako and Dila pass by the vinyl store at the marketplace, and she searches without success for the song that her mom used to sing to her, and she tells Della that she died several years ago, and that's why she makes mochis because she wants everyone to try the mochis that her mom loves so much, which makes Della curious and at night, it eats a lot of them. A week later is New Year's Eve and Tamako and Mokizo help their families in their mochi shops, since it is the day when they sell the most. The problem is that it is Tamako's birthday and as always, it goes unnoticed. At night, Della announces that it is time to say goodbye since he wants to return to his tropical island, but he is so fat that he can barely fly since he hasn't stopped eating mochis for a week. Then Tamako gives him a farewell mochi and the bird swallows it whole and he starts to choke. Meanwhile, all the neighbors who live in the shopping district prepare their gifts for Tamako, even Mochizo, who has bought gifts for Tamako every year but never had the courage to give them to her. They hear Tamako's frightened voice and think that she is choking on a mochi so Mochizo hits her back to help her. But Mr. Mamdai acts faster and turns Dila upside down, and he spits out the mochi, although he swallows it again immediately. Relieved, all the neighbors leave and later realize that they didn't give their gifts to Tamako. At dinner, Tamako says that she herself forgot about her birthday, but she is happy he sell a lot of mochis today and because she received many text messages wishing her happy birthday. Later, while Tamako sleeps, Della decides to stay a while longer. A few weeks later, Tamako wakes up super early like every morning to help make mochis, and she sees that her grandpa made a heart-shaped mochi because Valentine's Day is approaching. Mr. Mambe doesn't like it and tells Tamako to take it away from the box. At breakfast, Della announces that he will stay with them until spring because it is still cold, and Tamako tells him about Valentine's Day. At school, Tamako starts drawing sketches for a mochi for Valentine's Day, while Kana shows her sketches for a chocolate house. But Midori reminds them what Valentine's Day is all about. Then the girls tell Midori that they heard that she is very popular and many boys and girls want to receive chocolates from her. Later, Tamako visits several shops in the shopping district and realizes that the Valentine's spirit is null, so she decides to solve it. She goes up to her room and from her window throws stones at Mochizo's window and then makes signs to him that she wants to talk to him. He immediately understands what she wants and throws a phone made of plastic cups at her. She tells him that she wants to encourage a change in the district and asks him to go to the shop owner's meeting at the bathhouse today and he tells her that he will go. Later, the meeting begins and Mr. Mamede is surprised to hear that Tamako has a proposal. She says that the shopping district should look more aesthetically pleasing during Valentine's week and Mochizo quickly supports her and says that he can make a commercial in his film club to promote the market that pleases all the shop owners who start brainstorming ideas on how to get ready for Valentine's Day. Then Mr. Mamede gets up and says that Mochis and Valentine's Day have nothing in common and leaves. Days later, the shopping district is filled with hearts and the shop owners strive to be as heart-shaped as possible. Even the Yudon cook cuts the radish into heart shapes. 
One afternoon, Mochizo begins filming the commercial with Tamako and Kana dressed as rabbits. But seeing how Mochizo and Tamako act too friendly, Midori leaves to explore the market with Dela. At night, Tamako returns home and Mr. Mamidi surprises her with heart-shaped mochis filled with chocolate. He recites a love phrase to her that will go with the mochi, but is so cheesy that Tamako bursts out laughing, making him blush. But then she thanks him for getting in the Valentine's mood too. The next day, Mochizo brings everyone together to show them the commercial he filmed, but he has problems connecting the projector, so Della puts the cables in his beak and shows them what he recorded with his eyes while he was walking with Midori. And it's a beautiful video of Tameko going through all the shops, and Kana says it's a video showing Tamako's love for the shopping district. Then she whispers to Midori that we all have the right to love whoever we want. Suddenly, the commercial ends and Della also shows them images of the people from their island they miss him very much. On Valentine's Day, everyone exchanges chocolates and Tamako asks Midori if the day will come when they give chocolates to people they like, which makes Midori hesitate, and she jokingly tells her that that will never happen and runs away. Weeks later, spring has arrived and a new school year begins, but it is not all good news, since Della cannot leave yet because he has not lost weight yet and can barely fly. On the first day of school, Della accompanies Tamako to school, but he quickly falls behind and falls in front of a Sajri, a girl from the badminton club. Then all the students get together to see the lists of which classrooms they are in. Unfortunately for Midori and Mochizo, they are in a different classroom from Kana and Tamako. Later, Kana and Tamako greet as Sajri, since she will be her new classmate, but she is very shy and does not speak to them. On the way home, Asajiri runs into Della again and the bird tells her that he has lost his way home and asks her to take him to the mochi shop in the shopping district. She walks around the shops asking about Tamako's mochi shop and since everyone assumes that she is Tamako's friend, they give her flowers and cookies. Later, she arrives at Tamako's house and she gives her the bird, but Tamako convinces her to stay to drink tea and eat the new spring mochis. After that, Asajiri wants to leave but Della invites her to dinner and Tamako supports the idea, but since she has to help at the mochi shop, Asajiri ends up cooking with the help of Anko. Later, Asajiri receives a message from her father saying that the bathroom is broke, so Tamako takes her to the bathhouse where they spend a good time. Finally, Della accompanies her to the train station. The next day, Tamako tries to talk to Asajiri, but she ignores her and runs to the bathroom. She is so shy that she practices in front of the mirror how to tell Tamako that she had a good time yesterday, but when she is in front of her, she is not able to talk to her. The week goes by and Asajiri still can't thank Tamako, so Dila encourages her, but Asajiri thinks that his compliments aren't true. One day, while Asajiri was returning home, she runs into her teacher, Mr. Yaji, who is looking for Tamako's house, since he is meeting with each of his students' parents at their house. Upon arriving at Tamako's house, she is happy to see Asajiri, so she leaves Mr. Yaji to talk with her dad and takes Asajiri to the vinyl shop for coffee. There, Tameko gives her a gift in gratitude for cooking dinner the other day and Asajiri works up the courage to quickly tell her that she had a lot of fun that day. That makes Tameko happy and the two become friends. Heading home, Asajiri thanks Della and he says that he knew she needed someone to help break the ice. At night, Tameko calls Midori and tells her that she is Asajiri's friend now and Midori tells her that the other day she heard Asajiri practicing how to talk to her, and that makes Tameko happy. Days later, one night, Enko dreams of the last festival she enjoyed with her mom, it was her turn to dress as a princess and she looked so pretty that everyone called her Princess Enko. The next morning, Enko watches as Della tries to exercise to lose weight, but she says that it won't work if he doesn't stop eating so many mochis. At breakfast, Tamako shows her the new jacket for the festival It was made by the Shopping District Association, since they don't want to lose to the other districts. On the way to school, Tamako meets her friends and Anko hides behind them when she sees her classmates passing by. At school, Anko's friends tell her that on Sunday, everyone will go to the museum, but that day is the festival, so her dad refuses to give her permission to go. Mr. Maimdai says that on Sunday, he will need her and Yamako's help which makes Enko feel bad since before everyone used to have fun at the festival, but now they just work. In the afternoon, Tameko receives a call on Mochizo's paper cup phone, but she is so busy that she asks Enko to talk to him. Then Enko asks Mochizo to help her family on Sunday, and he happily accepts. She runs to tell her dad about the good news, but Mr. Mamidi is skeptical about Mochizo's intentions because he believes the boy wants to steal his secret mochi recipe and give it to his father, and Enko quickly clarifies that Mochizo just wants to spend time with Tamako. Then Tamako and their grandpa convince Mr. Mamidi by saying that they will work more hours to compensate for Enko's absence, and that finally convinces him. On Sunday, Enko gets up super early to help and finds Asajiri and Kana helping Tamako instead of Mochizo, so the little girl promptly finishes her chores and is free to go enjoy the festival in the shopping district and then to the museum with her classmates. Meanwhile, outside the neighbors paint Della gold so that he can pose on top of the shrine and Mochizo helps them carry him, regretting not having been able to spend time with Tamako. 
Later, Anko passes by the flower shop and the owner asks her for help dressing one of the girls as a princess and Anko remembers how she was once a little princess and she happily helps the kid. Later, Anko stays to watch the princess parade in the shrine and is late to go to the museum, so she decides to help sell the leftover mochas. Unfortunately for her, three boys from her class were passing by and she runs to her house to hide. Ben Tamako and her friends try to talk to her but Enko hides inside the closet. At that moment, a boy named Yuzuki enters and speaks through the closet to Enko. He brought her a souvenir from the museum that he bought for her. That makes Enko so happy that she comes out of hiding to see him. Tamako doesn't understand what's going on so Kana and Midori laugh at how clueless Tamako is about feelings. Months later, summer begins and the heat is so bad that Tamako and her friends decide to go to the pool and Tamako wants to invite Mochizo, but Midori says that it is inappropriate to invite a boy to the pool. Mochizo says he can't go because he has to do his homework, so the girls go to the pool and try to teach Tamako to swim since the school summer trip is approaching, but Tamako can't learn and remembers the advice the Mochizo used to give her, which upsets Midori a little. Meanwhile, Mokizo keeps regretting having lost the opportunity to spend time with Tamako and is seen by Dela, who tries to find out which girl he is pining for. And when the bird discovers that Mochizo likes Tamako, he begins to give him advice on how to confess his feelings. Days later, the summer trip begins with the students arriving at the beach and Dela can barely stand up because he got dizzy on the bus ride. When Dela recovers, Mokizo takes him to the woods and begins to read him the letter he wrote to Tamako. But they are overheard by Midori, who questions them about what they are doing. But the two play dumb and Mochizo gives the letter to Della to take to Tamako. But Midori quickly runs to the girl's room and closes the window on Della. Mochizo doesn't understand why Midori would do such a thing. At night, while the other students heat snacks on the bonfires, Mochizo and Midori argue in the distance. She tells him that he should stop chasing Tamako because she has no feelings for him. Plus, she thinks he's a coward for confessing his feelings to Tamako through a letter. But Mochizo blushes and says that it wasn't a love letter, but rather a letter to tell Tamako that he cares a lot about her and wants to protect her from everything. This makes Midori angrier since she wants to protect Tamako too, and they both start bragging what they know about Tamako. Suddenly, they are interrupted by Dela, who is being chased by a cat. The next day, the students must swim a short distance, and thanks to the countless times Tamako practiced with her friends, she is able to do it. At break, Midori asks Tamako how she feels about Mochizo, and Tamako says that he is her childhood friend and a comrade of Mochis. Then Midori asks what she is to her and Tamako smiles saying that she is her friend and she loves her. Meanwhile, Della is chased by a seagull and he's able to fly away as he flees for his life. At night, Tamako is very tired and she just wants to sleep but Kana and Asajiri remind her that today they are going to see fireworks show on the beach. On the beach, Mochizo and Midori make peace. For Midori, they are the same to Tamako and she tells him that he can ask Tamako out but Mokizo insists that his letter to Tamako was not a love letter. Just then, Tamako arrives and tells them that they should all watch the fireworks together and she and Mokizo begin shouting their good fortune wishes for their mochi shops as the fireworks sparkle in the sky. Days later, the heat continues and that decreases sales in the shopping district and according to Tamako, while she was cleaning the statue that protects children, she only counted 13 people passing by the shops. Later at the shopping district meeting, she says that they should do something to increase visitors, and she comes up with the idea of making a haunted house and everyone agrees with it. The next day, the preparations for the haunted house begin with the help of her friends and the merchants give her many cardboard boxes to work with. At night, when Mr. Mainbe was closing the mochi shop, he sees some bright lights and the next day, he tells everyone that he saw some fireballs. This worries all the adults because they think that the bad spirits might get angry with Tamako for making a haunted house, and they decide to protect her. So in the afternoon, while Tamako and the girls work in the haunted house, the shop owners give Tamako a garlic necklace and sprinkle holy water and salt around her. Days later, impossible things begin to happen in the commercial district. For example, footprints made of water appeared in the bathhouse when no one was around in the flower shop. The owner forgot the flowers outside and instead of withering, they bloomed. In the afternoon, the girls invite Asajiri to be the first to go through the haunted house and Dila offers to go in with her to protect her, but the bird is the one who is most scared. According to Asajiri, the haunted house will be a success because it is very scary, but that only scares the shop owners so they tell Tamako what has been happening, but Asajiri uses logic and says that it is normal for there to be footprints in a bathhouse and flowers usually bloom after being taken out of a cold place. That calms everyone down and the girls start handing out the leaflets. The next day, many people come to the haunted house and they all agree that it is very scary. Even the girl's homeroom teacher takes his girlfriend for a walk through the haunted house. Later, Tamako sees that the people who pass by the haunted house stay to walk through the shopping district. At night, at the commercial district meeting, everyone toasts in honor of Tamako since thanks to her, there were many sales today and Kana explains to them that the fireballs that Mr. Mainbei saw was Della. 
It turns out that it was all part of her plan. She made the bird spin around with lights in its beak so that some people would see it and spread the word about those strange things happening in the commercial district, and that would attract more people to the haunted house. But suddenly, Della begins to malfunction and images come out of his beak, warning that Choi is about to arrive. Days later, Della wakes up scared when he hears a familiar flute coming down the stairs and bounces down the stairs where a girl playing the flute is waiting for him. She is Choi and she is angry with Della, since he never came to the southern island where they live. At breakfast, she explains to them that she is the fortune teller of the mock disgusting royal family, which has ruled the island for generations and she uses the royal bird to make predictions. The Mambe family is amazed to hear that Della is a royal bird, but Choi scolds him for gaining too much weight and reminds him that he came looking for a bride for the prince. Later, while Tamiko is at school, Choi and Della talk alone and she scolds him again for not having returned home and for not answering all the messages the prince sent him. Then Della tells Choi that his communication system is failing and apparently only works when he is unconscious, but that doesn't explain why he didn't come home so Della decides to lie. The bird tells Choi that they have trapped him here against his will, and not only that, they force him to work at the mochi shop, and he can only eat mochis even though it makes him fat. Later, Tamako returns home and finds Choi cleaning the house so she invites her to try some mochis, but Choi fervently refuses, so Tamako takes her on a tour of the shopping district, and Choi is surprised when all the shop owners start giving her gifts knowing that she is Tamako's friend who came from far away. Choi wonders if this is how they snared Dila, so she refuses to eat the croquettes they gave her. Tamako doesn't realize this and tells everyone that Choi is a fortune teller and everyone asks her to make a prediction. Then Choi reluctantly does it. She blows the flute and uses Dela, and the prediction is that a great white beast will appear in a shopping district and suddenly a big white dog appears and everyone agrees that Choi's predictions are accurate. On the way home, Tamako tells her that they should go to the bathhouse and Choi is even more suspicious. There, Choi gets lost and ends up in a hot pool area and the water is so hot that she faints but luckily, she is found by Enko and Tamako in seconds. At home, Choi refuses to eat because she thinks everyone is acting too nice to her, and that's how they trap Dela. The next day, Choi sets up a fortune-telling booth and makes some fortune-telling about love. Siguri asks her if she is going to get married and Choi says that she will have a peaceful marriage that makes everyone happy and Tomio gets a little sad because he has a crush on her, but he congratulates her too. At night, the girls and Choi go to the bathhouse, but is closed because Sayuri's family is celebrating the prediction of her marriage. Then they run into Tonio, who thanks Choi for making Sayuri so happy. After that, the girls go home and Choi can't stop thinking about Tomio and his one-sided love with Sayuri, and that leads her to think about the prince. So she soaks in the tub trying to listen to the waves of her home. When she wakes up, she is in bed and Tamako is taking care of her because she has a fever, and she doesn't stop crying in her sleep saying that she can't hear the waves. The next day, Choi wakes up much better thanks to the music that Tamako played for her while she was sleeping and she thanks Tamako for taking care of her and scolds Della for lying to her and the bird says that it was all a misunderstanding, but Choi says that she will tell everything to the prince. After that, Choi decides to try mochis and tells Tamako that they are delicious. Later, Choi and Tamako go for a walk through the shopping district and Choi smells a scent on Tamako that reminds her of something. Days later, Kana gives a wooden bird box as a gift to Della, but he can barely get in and the girls help him out. Kana says that she has failed as a carpenter, and it is an unforgivable mistake to have taken the bird's measurements wrong. But Choi tells her that it is not her fault. Della has been eating the new fall mochis nonstop, so he has gained weight. Della is outraged by such a statement, but Choi is not intimidated and says that it is time for Della to begin a diet, and the girls agree with her because after all, Choi needs Della to be in shape to make predictions. The next day, the girls inform all the shop owners that they cannot continue feeding Della, which makes them sad, but they also realize that the bird was fatter than before, so they also support Della's diet. The problem is that Tamako's grandpa and dad sneak in at night to feed Della croquettes and mochis, and Tamako scolds them because Della is so round that he looks like a chicken. Then girls decide not to be separated from Della for a single moment, not even at school, so Kana gives Choi one of her cousin's school uniforms to Choi and tells her that she can pretend to be an exchange student to keep an eye on Della. The next day, Choi goes to school with the girls and Tamako's homeroom teacher believes her story of being a transfer student, so she and Della stay in the classroom. Later, in batten practice, the girls play with Della, forcing him to do exercises. On the way home, Choi starts sneezing and Tamako realizes that the temperate climate of Japan feels cold to Choi because she is used to the warm climate of the South American islands. So they take her to a wool clothing store and make her try on various autumn outfits, but none of her convinces them. At night, Della manages to escape to take a break from the girls and falls asleep without realizing that the prince was trying to communicate with him. A week later, Della's diet bears fruit and he loses weight considerably, and that worries the shop owners since they got used to seeing Della chubby. 
Dila promises to keep his figure this time, although Choi doesn't believe it. At that moment, Kenna arrives with a gift for Choi. She has bought a nice wool cardigan for Choi, so that she can enjoy her first autumn season. Weeks later, Mochi Day is approaching and Mr. Mame Dai remembers with nostalgia how he met his wife at the mochi shop. While Tamako sings the song that her mother used to sing to her, she suggests to her father to change the mochi recipe to celebrate Mochi Day, but her father refuses. Then, Anko tells Tamako to prepare several boxes of mochis because a classmate of hers is coming to pick them up tomorrow afternoon. On the other hand, the one in charge of meals in the house is Choi. She cooks delicious exotic dishes with the help of Della, who has gained weight again but not so much that he cannot fly and do grocery shopping. During the day, Anko feels sad, but she doesn't tell anyone about it, and this is noticed by Mochizo, since he approached to ask if Tamako was thinking about his gift, since his birthday is the same day as Mochi Day. In the afternoon, Yuzuki goes to the mochi shop to pick up his order and Anko refuses to come down and just looks at the souvenir they gave her. At night, Anko quickly eats her dinner and goes to sleep alerting Tamako that something is happening to her sister, so she signals Mochiza with a flashlight to talk to him via plastic cup phone. She tells him about Anko's strange attitude and Mochizo tells her that he will talk to her tomorrow. The next day, Mochizo asks Anko what is making her so sad and she reveals that Yuzuki is going to change schools because on Mochi Day he will move out of the neighborhood and then runs away. Saturday is Mochi Day and the two mochi shops prepare their mochis outside, delighting customers with their preparation techniques, although Mochizo's father gets angry when his son helps Tamako instead of him. While the others prepare mochis, Mokizo tells Tamako that Anko is sad because her friend Yuzuki is going to move and Tamako comes up with an idea for her sister to go say goodbye. Tameko gives her a box of freshly made mochis and tells her that she should give them to her friend and since she doesn't know what to tell him, Tamako suggests says that the mochis will make him happy because they are freshly made. Then Anko runs off to Yuzuki's house and Dela goes with her. Anko runs so fast that she falls and hurts her knees but she doesn't have much time so she gets up and continues running to Yuzuki's house. The moving truck had already loaded everything so Anko arrives just in time to give the mochis to Yuzuki and he thanks her by saying that the mochis from her shop are the most delicious in the city so he will visit her from time to time every time he goes to her shop, which makes Anko very happy. In the afternoon while Mr. Mame Day is taking a break from selling mochi, he sees his guitar and starts playing a song. The melody sounds so familiar to Tamako that she interrupts her dad saying that she has wanted to know the name of that song for a long time. So he takes her to the vinyl store and asks Yugasuyama to tell their story to Tamako. It turns out that when they were teenagers, he and Mr. Mamedai form a musical band called Dynamite Beans, and one day Mr. Mamedai fell madly in love with Hinako, the mother of his daughters. So he wrote a song for her, and that song is the one that Hinako sang to Tamako when she was a little girl. At night, everyone returns home and Tamako surprises Mochizo to tears with a mochi-shaped birthday cake. Before going to sleep, Mr. Meimbe sees photos of his wife and can't help but sing the song he wrote for her, and that touches Tamako, who tells her dad that she loves him. Ten days later, the president of the student council announces to the clubs that the school festival is approaching, and it is time to draw the schedules in which the clubs will make their presentation. Fortunately, the Batten club's turn is at primetime and Midori as club captain feels pressure to make everything go perfect. Later, the girls from the Baton Club meet to decide the outfits, music, and choreography. Midori says that she will take care of everything, although she asks their opinion on what theme they should choose. Kana proposes choosing the theme based on fireworks, and Tamako wants the entire presentation to be based on mochis. In the afternoon, Midori draws a few sketches for the costume they will wear, but she can't think of a single movement for the choreography or what music to use. The next day, Midori shows her costume sketches to her club, and the girls love it, and when they ask about the choreography, Midori lies that she is still working on it. In the afternoon, Tamako shows Choi the sketch of the outfit she will wear at the school festival, and Choi amazes her with her sewing skills when she begins sewing Tamako's outfit. Then Tamako tells her that she should be the one to sew the dress of the prince's future bride. Meanwhile, Midori visits her grandfather's toy store in the shopping district as she is looking for inspiration for choreography and music choice, but nothing comes to her mind. So she goes to the vinyl store and Mr. Yusei Yama gives her coffee and tells her that silence is also music, and she understands his advice, she needs to de-stress, but she can't do it. The next day, Midori goes to school and still can't think of a choreography, so she goes to the bathroom and talks to the mirror, encouraging herself, without realizing that Asajiri was listening to her. In the afternoon, Asajiri goes to buy mochis at Tamako's shop and tells the girls what she saw and heard from Midori. The next day, Kana and Tamako go to Midori's classroom and Mokizo tells them that Midori didn't come to school today because she had a fever. After school, the girls go to Midori's house and she hides all the choreography sketches and removes the cold cloth from her forehead. In front of them, Midori acts as if she is already healthy, but Kana quickly realizes that her garbage can is full of paper buns from unfinished choreographic steps. Suddenly, 
Midori begins to cry profusely without realizing it, and she apologizes for being a bad captain and she confesses that she has not been able to put together the choreography for the festival. The girls try to calm her down, but the tears continue to fall without stopping, so the girls hug her and tell her that they should all work together. Then Della says that they shouldn't worry about the dance, he can teach them how to do it and shows them his bird dance, causing Midori to stop crying and start laughing. The days go by and all the girls work together on their costumes with the help of Choi and together they choose the music and put together a perfect choreography. On the day of the cultural festival, Choi and Della go backstage and Midori includes them in the circle's cheer and Choi notices that Tamako has a mole on her neck. Fortunately, the Baton Club presentation is perfect and Midori congratulates her girls for giving it their all today. On the way home, Tamako and her friends run into Choi, who bows to Tamako and tells her that she is her prince's bride. Then at dinner, Choi explains to them that Tamako is the princess for three reasons. Her smell is similar to the islands of South America, the mole on her neck is the same as that of all the princesses who reigned and her connection with Mochis. The problem is that if Tamako marries the prince, her name would be Tamako Makita's Gusting which makes Mr. Mamadai angry. So to lighten the atmosphere, Tamako changes the topic of conversation and tells them some great news. She is about to complete her diary of stamps. It turns out that if someone completes her diary of stamps, she will be given a gold medal. And until now, no one has been able to complete their diary because to do so, you have to shop in the shopping district every day. And she's been filling her diary with stamps since elementary school. The next day, Choi writes letters to the prince and tells Dela to go to the post office to drop them off. After school, Tameko goes by all the shops that give out stamps and she is deeply happy for her when she manages to complete it. In the afternoon, she goes to the oldest elder in the district and he gives her the long-awaited gold medal. But her happiness is short-lived because Choi tells her that the prince is going to communicate with them today through Dela. Later, Choi, Dela, and Tameko meet to talk to the prince. He thanks Tameko for taking care of Choi and Dela and tells the bird that he wants to go see him and the communication is cut off. Tamako insists that she is not the princess and Choi begins to name all the prince's qualities, although Mochizo, who was listening to the conversation, says that they cannot know that with just one call. After that, he goes to the bridge where he runs into Tamako's friends. Midori is the most affected by the news and everyone agrees that such sudden changes are scary. At night, Mr. Mainbag goes to the meeting of the business owners of the shopping district and everyone tries to convince him that the news that Tamako is getting married is good, but that only makes him angry and he goes to the store of vinyl to have a coffee. But Yusai Giamma gives him Irish coffee, and that makes him drunk. Before leaving, his friend tells him that what matters most is Tameko's happiness. At home, Mr. Manbe can barely speak, but he manages to tell Tameko that the only thing that matters is her happiness. After that, Tameko goes up to her room and Mochizo signals her to talk on the plastic cup phone, and he tells her that it doesn't matter what she decides, just think about being happy. This frustrates her, and she thinks everyone wants to get rid of her. Then Anko asks her to sleep together and hub like colas, which comforts her a lot. The next day, Tameko wakes up early and decides to put her medal next to her mother's flowers, but she can't find it and she wakes up the entire district with the bad news. She starts to cry and Mokizo tells her that he will give him his diary of stamps, but that only makes her sadder. Suddenly, Prince Makita's gusting appears and tells her that he found the gold medal lying on the street. Tamako thanks the prince deeply, although she is shocked when he tells them who he is. Then the prince is surprised to see a talking bird in Japan and Dela, embarrassed, tells him that he is Dela, his royal bird, just a little fatter. After that, they go to Tamako's house and the prince formally introduces himself. He is Mecha Makita's gusting and he thanks them for taking care of Choi and Dela. Upset by the situation, Tamako decides to go to school anyway, but both Mokizo and her friends keep asking her what she will do, which confuses Tamako even more. Her head is a mess and she can't concentrate on practicing with her baton. Upon returning home, she passes through the shopping district and sees all the shops closed and her heart begins to pound with fear, so she runs as fast as she can to her house. She enters terrified and her family greets her calmly. Then she goes out and explains to her friend that the last time the shops were closed in the middle of the day was when her mother passed away. That makes her friends sad, so they all hug her. Then Della gets serious and asks her if she really wants to be a princess. Tamako starts to tear up and tells him her life story. She's a simple girl born and raised in the shopping district. Her life and home are in this place and she doesn't want to leave. Then Della flies as fast as possible to the bathhouse where all the shop owners are gathered with Mecca. They really like the boy, so they don't stop taking photos with him and asking him to tell them about his island. Della and Tamako almost arrive at the same time and she tells Mecca that she can't marry him because she doesn't want to leave. Then Mecca tells them that Tamako cannot be the princess candidate because the smell that Choi smelled comes from the flowers imported from the island and it turns out that the forest gives them to Tamako every day. That relieves Tamako a lot and Mecca is clarifies that he only came for Choi and Dela. The next day, it is time to say goodbye to Choi and Tamako and her friends give her gifts and ask her to visit them again soon because she is already a very dear friend now. 
Halfway to the airport, Della gets off the truck and decides to stay at Tamako's house a little longer. The months go by and Tamako's birthday is approaching again and Dila knows he should leave, so on New Year's Eve, the bird tells Mr. Maimde that he doesn't want to make Enko and Tamako cry, so he will leave without saying goodbye. As he flies, he drops a feather and when Tamako sees it, she knows that Della is gone and runs to chase him. Unfortunately for Della, he gained a lot of weight again during these months and when he was passing by the flower shop, he fell asleep from exhaustion in a flower arrangement. That night, Makizo goes to pick up the flower arrangement as Tamako's birthday gift. This year, he is determined to give his gift to Tamako, and when she opens it, she almost cries with happiness when she sees Della asleep among the flowers. Months later, in a distant island, Mecca and Choi make mochas following Della's recipe, while the bird can't stop thinking about Tamako. On the other hand, in Japan, Tamako and her friends are now third-year high school students and Kano wants to make many memories with the Baton Club, so she convinces them to participate in a competition. Given to so much insistence on Kana's part, the club accepts and Tamako sets out to improve when it comes to catching her Baton. Meanwhile, in the film club room, Mokizo keeps watching videos of Tamako and his clubmates realize that he has brochures from Tokyo University. Then, Mokizo confesses to them that he will leave the mochi shop and move to Tokyo, although he has not yet told Tamako. Later, Tamako and her friends walk home while talking about the future. Kano wants to study architecture. Asajiri prefers to study literature. Midori says that she wants to go to university, but she still doesn't know what to study. The one who has not yet decided what to do with her life is Tamako. She only thinks and lives for Mochis, besides, she wants to stay in the Mochis shop. When Mokizo arrives home, his father looks at him tearfully, but his mother tells him that she agrees with him moving, but she advises him to tell Tamako as soon as possible. At night, Mokizo gathers the courage to tell Tamako that he is going to move out and throws his plastic cup phone at her, but it is intercepted by Anko. Later, Mokizo bumps into Anko and Tamako at the entrance to the bathhouse and she tells him the great news that the Baton Club is entering a competition and she will be busy practicing. The next day, Mokizo does not stop filming Tamako or observing her sadly. Then Midori tells him that she has noticed that he keeps looking at Tamako and he confesses that he is moving to Tokyo and he hasn't told Tamako yet. The news surprises Midori and she tells him that you should tell Tamako soon, but he doesn't have the courage to do it, so she challenges him to play rock, paper, scissors. Mochizo loses and Midori makes him promise that he will tell Tamako the truth today. And to Mochizo's bad luck, Tamako arrives and Midori tells her friend that Mochizo wants to talk to her. Then Tamako says that they can walk together on the way home and Mochizo knows that there is no way out. He will tell her everything today. Later in the film club room, Mochizo's friends tell him that they support him in every way and encourage him to declare his love for Tamako. At that moment, Tamako enters the club room and tells him that she is ready to go home. They walk in comfortable silence until they reach a river with stone steps, where they used to play as children, although Tamako says that he used to drop her into the water. Makizo tries to tell her about Tokyo, but she keeps interrupting him until the two end up playing on the stone steps of the river, but this time, when she's about to fall, Mokizo takes her hand and prevents her from falling. She thanks him and feels strange when she feels Mokizo's hand in hers. Suddenly, Mokizo tells her that he will move to Tokyo because he always wanted to study filmmaking and not only that, he confesses that he is deeply in love with her. This surprises Tamako so much that she trips and falls into the river. Mokizo takes her out of the water, but she doesn't know what to think or feel, so she runs away, leaving her backpack and bet in there. When she gets home, her father is surprised to see her wet and asks Enko to help her. During dinner, Tameko can't stop thinking about Mochizo and every time her family talks about Mochis, she thinks they are talking about Mochizo and gets nervous. Before going to sleep, she sees her backpack and Batten and Anko tells her that Mochizo brought them to her, which makes Tamako turn so red that Anko thinks her sister has a fever. The next day, Tameko wakes up late, something unusual for her, and goes down to the mochi shop to help her grandfather and dad prepare the mochis, but she can't stop thinking about Mochizo, so her dad thinks she has a cold and she runs away. Later. At the Baton Club, Tameko keeps making mistakes and the girls ask why she is so unfocused, but Tameko claims that she is fine, so Kana advises her to find her center of gravity. After that, Tameko and Midori go to their classroom and Tameko tries to hide from Mochizo when she sees him. Tameko and Mochizo sit next to each other in class, so they try not to look at each other. Later, Tameko and her friends get together to eat lunch and the girls are surprised to see that Tameko didn't bring Mokis this time and she confesses that she has a hard time eating them since yesterday and Midori suspects that something happened between her and Mokizo. Then Tameko tells them that when she and Mokizo were children, he used to call her Mochi and that bothered her so she didn't like eating Mochis but when her mother passed away, someone gave her a smiling Mochi to comfort her and it worked, the Mochi gave her comfort and became her favorite food. Although Kana tells her that she has a mochi slump, she is so used to eating and living for mochis that she momentarily gets tired of them and advises her to fix it quickly. 
Before going home, the Betten Club gets together to practice more, but Tamako keeps failing. In the afternoon, Tamako walks through the shopping district, and it calms her heart. But when she runs into Mochizo at the croquette shop, she gets so nervous that she accepts a croquette and runs away. At night, Tamako and Anko go to the bathhouse, and after bathing, Tamako sees Mochizo and runs away again. Her heart doesn't stop thundering when she sees him, and she doesn't know what it means. The next day, Tamako wakes up early and goes down to the mochi shop to help her dad. But he says that she feels tired and asks her to take a break. Since her mother passed away, Tamako has been working nonstop. Tamako thanks her dad and she goes for a walk through the shopping district greeting all the shop owners and she can't help but look at Mochizo's closed window and feel sad for it as she imagines it closed for a long time. After that, she goes to school early to practice catching the baton, but she keeps failing and Midori tells her that she can tell her what's bothering her. Then Tamako sadly tells her that Mochizo is moving to Tokyo and that he is in love with her. Tamako says that she doesn't know how to feel and can only think that everything is changing and that's a good thing. But she can't stop thinking that Mochizo was always by her side since they were babies and now he's going to leave. Midori tells her that she doesn't know how to comfort her but it makes her upset that she is sad. During the morning, Tameko does not stop observing Mochizo without him realizing it but that only disconcerts her more when practicing with the baton. So Midori asks Tamako to get some rest and clear her mind. Back home, Tamako visits the usual shops and can't help but listen to the love problems of the shop owners and when she gets home, she plays the Dynamite Beans music cassette and while she looks at Mochizo's closed window, she listens carefully to the song that her dad wrote for her mom. On the other hand, Mochizo goes out to buy tofu, but first he goes to the vinyl store to have coffee and Yusei Jiyama passes the sugar bowl to him. But when he sees that Mochizo is about to add a second spoonful of sugar to the coffee, he tells him that today's youth doesn't know how to wait, they don't even wait for the first spoonful of sugar to dissolve, and that leaves Mochizo thinking. After drinking his coffee, Mochizo buys the tofu and returns home, but when he arrives, he sees an ambulance outside Tamako's house and runs to see what happened. It turns out that Tamako's grandfather choked on a mochi and has to be hospitalized. She is very scared and when she sees Mochizo, she says his name and he realizes that she wants him to go with her to the hospital. Later. Tameko's father arrives at the hospital and is deeply relieved when he finds out that everything is fine, and then goes out to sit with Mochizo and him that he knows that he is going to Tokyo and asks him to visit them again from time to time. Tamako then offers to take care of her grandfather a little more and tells her father that he should drive Mochizo's parents, who convince Mochizo to stay with Tamako. Alone, Mochizo asks Tamako to forget his love confession since he wants everything to go back to the way it was, which leaves her even more sad. The next day, Tamako still can't grab the betten which is a problem because the competition's approaching. So she tells her friends that Machizo confessed his feelings to her. But last night, he asked her to forget it, and that makes her sad and she doesn't know why, so Asajiri tells her that she is sad because she likes Mochizo too, which is a big revelation for Tamako. Later, in class, Tamako looks closely at Mochizo and finally remembers that he was the one who gave her a small, smiling mochi to console her when her mother passed away. That revelation makes her very happy and her friends convince her that she should tell Mochizo how she feels. During the day, Tamako tries to talk to Mochizo, but she can't do it, even Kana tries to send him a message pretending to be Tamako, but she stops her. At night, Midori meets Mochizo and tells him that she no longer thinks he is a coward. Before going to sleep, Tamako listens once again to the song that her father wrote for her mother, and she can't stop thinking about how life changes very quickly. For example, next year, Enko will be a middle school student. Suddenly, Mr. Mamide's song ends and it starts another recording, this time it's the girl's mother, she dedicates Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on piano to him, since she wanted to give him something in return. The song comforts Tamako and Anko, even though their mom was a bad singer. Days later, it's the Baton competition and Tamako tells Midori that she will do well today because her center of gravity has been restored since she has decided to give Mochizo an answer. And she was right, the Baton choreography turns out perfect, although Mochizo did not go to see it, and instead of that, he sees Tamako's videos for the last time and decides to delete them, although he regrets it at the last minute. At night, Tamako receives a call from a classmate. She tells her that she should not go to school tomorrow because there are cases of influenza and asks her not to cut the chain of calls and inform Mochizo. Then, Tamako decides not to call Mochizo because she wants to talk to him alone and before going to sleep, Tamako asks Mochizo's mom to give her his plastic cup phone. The next day, Tamako waits impatiently for Mochizo at school with his plastic phone in her hand, but he doesn't come and instead, Midori appears. She says that Makizo decided to move today and will take the train to Tokyo soon. Tameko can't believe it and runs to the train station. At that moment, Kana enters the classroom and Midori tells her that she lied to Tamako. Makizo is not moving yet, he is just going to Tokyo to take the entrance exam, which makes Kana happy for her friend. Meanwhile, Tamako arrives at the train station and looks everywhere for Mochizo, and when she finds him, she tells him crying that they have always been together and now he's going far away. Then she throws in one of the plastic phones and when he catches it, 
She whispers to him that she loves him, making Mochizo cry with happiness, 